This evening, I want to focus on the character of John the Baptist. Uh, Jesus calls him the greatest man born of woman, except those who were baptized in the name of Jesus. Greatest man up to that time. What made him so great? Well, it wasn't his sartorial splendor, that's for sure. Camel hair was not exactly a classy outfit, even for its day. Uh, not because he uh, had the nerve to tell Herod off, and uh, not because he got his head chopped off for telling Herod off. What made him great was the greatest man born a woman before Jesus came is what happened in the gospel tonight. He was humble. He was a humble man. We don't hear much today about the virtue of humility. What made him so humble? First of all, John had quite a following of his own. He was rather well known in that area of the world, so much so that even Herod heard about him. He was anxious to hear what he had to say. Crowds were going out to the Jordan, want, wanting to be baptized by John. But somehow, John knew that it wasn't about him. He knew that it was about somebody else. And when Jesus came to that Jordan River, and the dove descended upon him, he points him out. There is the Lamb of God. That's the one who takes away the sins of the world. It's not me. Follow him. How many people would do something like that today? Today, it's all about me. It's all about me. Humility. Really, the only way we can fully understand humility, and it's not a virtue that makes us want to grovel. You know, I'm nothing, I'm a nobody, who am I? No. It's about realizing who I really am and what my job really is, and that's what John does tonight. But the best way to understand humility is maybe to uh, look at the vices that go against the virtue of humility. Virtue. I can talk about virtue. Right, virtue. Humility is a virtue, but there are vices too. Right? There are two vices that uh, militate against humility. The uh, first one is uh, jealousy. Jealousy. Now, what does jealous mean? It means that I want to keep what I have. I want to keep what I have, and I don't want to share it with someone else, or I don't want to help somebody else. I'm jealous to keep what I have. It's mine. For fear, if I give it away, somebody might end up doing better than me, or living better than me. I remember when I was in, uh, don't tell anybody this, when I was in the seminary, <laughs> We had a classmate who was a very brilliant guy, very, very brilliant guy. And uh, you know how before an exam, you're always hanging out in front of the classroom, you know? I don't know if they still do this anymore. They might have everything online these days. But in my time, you'd hang out in front of the classroom until they're ready to give you the exam. And we'd ask each other questions. Hey, what about this? What about, what's the answer to that? We'd go to this guy, and every time we'd ask him, he'd say, well, I don't know. He was always getting like 100 on his test, but he didn't know anything. Because he was a jealous son. Of, I mean, he was a jealous, a jealous guy, all right? And uh, yeah, he got the grades. He, got, he sure got the grades, and he got the awards. But you know what he didn't get? Our respect. We consider him a major stinker until this very day. You can use that. I mean, I say some other stuff about stinkers, but this is a major stinker, okay? 
All right. All right, so that, that's a, a jealous person, not willing to help anybody else, wanted it all for himself. So he got the awards, you know, keep them, keep them. We don't like you, right, to this day. All right. Um, the next one is, is kind of um, uh, a case that I think a lot of us uh, are hearing about lately. Um, it, it, it has to do um, with the other vice. It's called envy. It's different from jealousy. It's envy. What does envy mean? It means I want what you have. See? I want what you have. You hear the expression, uh, she's green with envy? That means, you know, she's so sick, she's turning green like she wants to throw up. She's so upset. That's what it means, right? Green, green. <laughs> You've been hearing about this contemporary uh, case. It's a, a recent book that has come out um, by Prince Harry. Now, I am told that this is one of the most popular books ever written. It's like already three million copies sold or something like that, and it's going to a second printing. I, a lot of people are, you know, I guess, I guess kind of nosy to see what he's going to say about the, the the royal family, but now don't buy the book. Don't buy it. I don't like Harry. All right, I don't like him. All right, but I I think I'm in good company because his family doesn't like him either at this point. But anyway, from the reports that I've read, uh, the book is really about um, envy. You know, his his brother Willie. They call him Willie. What do they call him? Bill. What 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 do they call him? William. William. Whatever his name is. Um, gets all the attention. So, you know, he's saying, you know, uh, like, he's the heir and I'm the spare, see? So, and, and he was kind of, you know, it, it comes across, he's kind of jealous, uh, or, or en I'm sorry, take a big stuff, envious of the whole thing. He's very envious of the whole thing. So what do envious people do? If they can't have what you have, they try to destroy you. That's what they do. They try to destroy you. And that's how, you know, all of these, um, these rumors get about, all of this uh, negative uh, commentary about uh, friends and relatives. It tries to destroy. It's a great sign of immaturity. It's a, it's a great sign of immaturity. You know, I'd like to do a case study on old Harry. He's very immature. And he's a very angry man, and he's a very envious man. I'm only the spare. I'm not getting the attention that I think that I deserve. And I don't think his wife is helping him too much either, but that's my, my attitude toward the whole thing, right? But, but that's envy. See, that's envy. If I can't get what I want, I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to destroy even the monarchy. I mean, I couldn't care in the least about the monarchy, but I did like the queen. She was a nice lady. I liked her. Okay. All right. So those are the two uh, opposite of opposites of the virtue of humility. It's a jealousy and it is envy. Now, what do we do to become um, more like John the Baptist? That it's not all about me. It's really about somebody else. It's about other people. Let me tell you a story. This is an honest, honestly true story. Honestly true story. Um, many years ago, I was called into the bishop's office. And I said, oh my God, what am I doing here? Um, and he says to me, I want you to go back to school. So I said, why? <laughs> because I want you to be the principal of a high school, you understand? So I said, I want to be the principal of a high school. So I had to go for a master's degree in educational administration. Right. So he goes, you can go wherever you want. And I said, I'll, I'll go to Fordham University. They have a good program over there. So uh, I went to uh, Fordham, and I had to, I had to do it over, over a year or a couple of summers or whatever it was, you know, you, like, I, I did it, I did it. And uh, when I completed the master's program, the dean called me in. And he was the dean of the School of Education. And his name was uh, Dean 
Max Weiner. Dean Max Weiner. Jewish man. Jewish man. Wonderful, wonderful guy. And he says to me, uh, well, are you going to be here next year? I said, for what? He says, for the doctoral program. I said, no. I said, the bishop said I could only come here to get the master's program. That I had to go back to be the principal of the high school. That's how he talked. He's one of those, you know, those Bronx guys, you know, Bronx, New York. They don't talk as nice as us guys from Brooklyn, I'm telling you. <laughs> All right. So I said, no. I said, he said, no, he wants me back. So, you know, uh, I called the bishop. I said, look, bishop, uh, you think I could uh, get, get the doctorate? Uh, because I, I did pretty well, you know, here. And, no, I want you back. So I, I went to the dean and I said, dean, I said, I spoke to him. He says, I have to go back. So he goes, what's his phone number? <laughs> this is true. It's true. What's his phone number? I said, here it is. I'm going to call him. Dean Weiner called up Bishop Guilfoyle. Right? And he says to him, you got a smart boy here. Why don't you let him get the doctorate? I need him in the high school. I'll tell you what. I'll give him a full scholarship. And I'll give him a stipend to go along with it. And that's when I found out that the bishop was a little Jewish too. He said, okay, it's a deal. <laughs> <laughs> Now, when I finally completed the program, uh, after, you, you know, you have to do a dissertation, you have to do a defense. Um, the dean came in and he said, I have a little reception set up for you. So I went to one of the rooms and there was uh, champagne and sandwiches there. And uh, the dean said, I want to make a toast. And he fills up everybody's champagne. There must have been maybe 10, 12 people there, faculty. And he says, I want to make a toast to you. He says, and I want you to remember one thing. He said, uh-oh, here I, you know, it's going to come like the development, you know, send in uh, money for the school. I'll tell you one thing. I want you to remember this. This is my toast. He says, I helped you up the ladder. Make sure you do it for other people. And that's my message to you tonight. Many of you have been helped up the ladder. Do it for other people too. That's humility. God love you.